A conversation with black women continues on ABC News Live. Here again, Deborah Roberts. Welcome back, everybody. Well, now we're going to switch gears a bit to the topic of black bodies. There is so much joy in our bodies and also so much pain inflicted upon them historically and even now. So I want to pose a question to all of you about black women and our bodies because, you know, obviously we're not a monolith. We're not all the same. We look at ourselves differently, but we, you know, how, how do you feel we're doing in terms of embracing our bodies. I mean, we have a lot of folks out there now. We've got Lizzo. We got yes. folks who are, you know, yes. all off, you know, the, the typical spectrum of what we see. But how, how, how do we make peace and feel good about our bodies in a society that doesn't always value curves and, and the way we look and skin color, mm. you know, dark Absolutely. skin color? Mm -hmm. What would you say, Marlene? Yeah, so I think it starts in our, in our household. So what were we told growing up as children? Mm. Um, so I know for me, I grew up in a Haitian household. So as a young girl growing up, it was always keep your body covered. Mm -hmm. And when I started to have curves, it was like, you have to hide it. So you can't go to work with a pair of jeans on and a t-shirt, you have to wear a long cardigan so you can cover your behind. So everything was about modesty. Yes, yeah. it was all about modesty. And also too, I grew up like in a religious household too mm -hmm. with that. So mm -hmm. it was all about modesty, stay covered, no one should see your body. And so this shame around body or like, you know, wearing a two piece, and I remember like getting stretch marks and feeling like, oh my gosh, I have stretch marks. Do I need to use makeup to cover my stretch marks? Mm. Or should I just wear a sheer top over my bathing suit so no one sees it? But what I, what I can appreciate now with our society is that we're seeing a lot more positivity around our body mm -hmm. images. So we're finding that, you know, like you mentioned Lizzo. Lizzo is proud <laughs> yes, as she queen. is, and I love it. <laughs> yes, I love queen. it, love I love it. how bold she is. Yeah, Not only it. that, I think it's helping younger girls mm -hmm. that are growing up in today's society because young girls, they struggle with their self-esteem, their body image. Right. So this allows them to see that you can embrace all of who you are. But what I worry about, and I might get in trouble for saying this, but what I worry about though is that we also do have a problem in our community, right? With yes. diabetes and, you know, not being healthy. And it's one thing to embrace your body, but I think we also have to give the message about, you know, being healhealthy, looking after ourselves. Yes. LaShawn, you and I follow each other on Instagram yes, and, you know, do. I see you out there working out and I try to work out. But I think the embracing the body is important, but also getting the message. I mean, how do we balance that? I think it's the number one thing. It's to know your numbers, yeah. to know to know what your numbers are, know your know if you know your issue, know your health issues and be mindful of that as even though we may have fuller figured women in our communities and I love a curvy woman. I mm -hmm. think women with, I think they just look, we all look so beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I think that knowing your numbers and knowing what your health, how important it is that you stay active, that's the main thing. You can right. be full figured and, and still healthy. have healthy, Absolutely. healthy numbers. I, I, think they're, I think they're two separate conversations mm. too. Like I yeah. think health versus your body, volump, you know, your body being volump, mm -hmm. voluptuous, mm -hmm. two different things. Right. Like I watched Lizzo on a stage run yeah. down mm -hmm. a, a, a 20 stairs and play the flute. Yeah. I can't do that, <laughs> right? like, I can't do that. I, I follow a lot of um, yogis and a lot of, there are women who are relatively right. large right. who can do headstands, exactly. can't do that. Exactly. So I think exactly. the conversation about our health is a real one. Right. But there are skinny women who eat potato chips every day yeah. and- And who are not healthy. Not that healthy. Is that is true. So I think if we can separate that, because we have to realize too, there's a whole culture of women who are not us who are paying mm -hmm. to look like us. You know, right. they're getting things injected in places and right. they're trying to do the thing and it's, right. you know, yeah. so we can love and value um, our bodies, we should, because there was a time, as you talk about in history, when that was not respected, when right. it was actually objectified in a bad way. Yes. But we can also talk about health, too, as a separate conversation. Well, well, that and that is a different conversation, but then there's a serious conversation, too, which is the over-sexualization of that. black yes. girls, yes. right? Yes. And who are seen as older, who are adultified, yes. and who are not seen as vulnerable, yes. even right. though they are girls. Yes. And we've seen it even in violent situations with a young girl who was killed in... Um, Ohio, I think it was, and they talked about her as being a woman and she was 16. So what yeah. about the idea of, you know, young women who are seen as adults? And, and that happens more often in the black community, yeah. I Yes, think. it does. And that's yeah. part of the silence we don't talk about. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I'm a victim of, of childhood sexual assault, and um, I don't talk about it a lot, but I talk about when it's important. 
um, and so many young girls have experienced that, so many women have experienced some type of sexual assault, whether it was in the home or outside of the home or in the family or outside of the family. And I think one of the things we have to talk about is, one, the victim blaming that happens in that, this idea that if our girls are, you know, showing themselves or being body positive, it's their fault. We yes. have to make sure they know it's not their fault. And we have to talk about the male culture that believes that if a woman has a shirt on that's low cut, you have permission, you don't. Mm -hmm. And that no is no, always no. That's right. Um, so we have to make sure that we're not shifting the blame to women or girls because they are expressing themselves if something bad happens to them. We also have to teach our girls how to protect themselves. Mm. right and how to be prepared in any situation and how not to blame themselves if something does happen to them because I think that can happen as well right and so I think we have to be very careful about that line yes. but you, did you have any thoughts about that about young girls though yeah and, and... absolutely because there was a, art, a research that was done around adultification at yeah. Georgetown and they talked about it girls as young as five years old that are being adultified by adult figures mm -hmm. they feel like we need less protection that we know more information about sexual content we're being high hypersexualized. Mm -hmm. So we have this either mammy figure where we're the mother and we're taking care of other people, the sapphire or the Jezebel. So is she aggressive? Is she hypersexualized? And so people in schools, churches, communities, they look at black girls as not needing protection. So like you mentioned, even in articles where if a young girl who's under 18, they're identifying her in an article as a woman, right. it's like, no, this is a child or mm -hmm. the young girl that was right. being policed um, in New York City, in New York, up, up, I believe upstate New York, where mm -hmm. the family called, it was a crisis call, a mental health crisis call, and more than six cop cars showed up. And one of the cops said to this young girl who's under 12, stop acting like a child. Oh, and she said, and she is a child. She said, but I am a child. And they were ready to tase her. And they had her pinned down to the ground. So you see a lot of this happen in schools because a lot of schools do have school resource officers mm -hmm. rather than having more mental health professionals in the school. And you find that more black girls are being, you know, criminalized in schools. Suspended? Suspended. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, black girls are six to seven times more likely to be suspended in school compared to white girls for the same exact behaviors. Yeah. But yet you find that we're the ones that are being in trouble because we're not allowed to be assertive. We're not allowed to be upset. We're not allowed to be angry. Perhaps she has anxiety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perhaps there's a traumatic event that just occurred in her life, but no one looks at that because we're supposed to be strong, keep moving as if nothing happened in our lives. And, and, it's, and it's, it's obviously just tragic. LaShawn, I want to ask you about the stereotype, though, and you're in, you're in theater and, and, and movies and television and all that. You know, it drives me crazy when I see a commercial and I see the sassy black woman. Always. It drives me crazy. <laughs> and, you know, and, and clearly that is just a stereotype. But have you encountered that in terms of trying to fight that? And I know you were just in a play on Broadway you were so proud of that, you know, that really talked about sort of the experience of, you know, black women. But how hard is that for you fighting stereotypes that are thrust upon black women? You know, it's so interesting that you asked that question because there have always been stereotypes within our community. But in, in, in the arts specifically, I deal with colorism. When dark, the darker skinned woman is considered, you know, she may not be the love interest. Mm. She may not be the one that, that needs caring. Mm -hmm. She may, she usually, and in my career, I have played victims. I've played women who've been subjugated predominantly. And I, I find that that is the number one battle I've had to fight mm -hmm. is how people see me and where they think I fit. Mm -hmm. And in theater and in, in film and in television, we are always, the darker skinned women are always given positions more, more often than not of someone who is being hurt or someone who has deal, who's dealing with drug, drug addiction, but never the celebrated, beautiful, um, lovely woman that people are admiring. Right. That's why when Lupita Nyong'o in Black Panther yeah. was put in that role, mm -hmm. I was so, so, I was thrilled, I was I screaming, was I was so excited about it because she was breaking a stereotype right, that, right. that we've all had to experience in, in our industry. This, this issue, this idea that a darker woman can't be the object of affection. Right. And that's mm -hmm. something that I've struggled with quite a bit. Viola Davis has had oh, big statements yes. about that. Yes. And yes. I've been her. so proud of her and her stand on so much of this too. So it is, it is definitely something that we all have to deal with. Well, we're gonna get to take another break in just a minute because we can just talk and talk and talk, yeah. but we do have to take a break. And we're, when we come back, we're gonna look at 
how black women navigate many of the systems that affect our daily lives from infrastructure to health care. Mm -hmm. Don't go anywhere. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.